Welcome everybody. Fire for Effect, The Flying Kitchen, episode 001. The term flying kitchen. So a flying kitchen is military slang for a, um, an army or a military field kitchen. So when we go to the field to, to train, we don't always eat shitty ass hard rations out of a bag. If we're lucky, we get fresh rations or fresh food made in a field kitchen. It's basically a green army truck that, that transforms into this, this kitchen where all the equipment that the cooks need are in there and there's basically a serving line. You go up one set of stairs, you get your grub, you go another set of stairs to, to exit and there you go. So I thought, well fuck, I'm gonna use that term for this pod. Yeah, I'm doing a cooking show. You're probably wondering why and before we get into that, I'll, I'll get into the background. We are gonna cook a summertime dish Today, it's fucking hot as balls out. And this is one of those days where you really don't want to be turning on your stove or, you know, standing out behind your grill, especially if you live in a house like mine where it faces southwest, where that sun is just pounding. So it's currently 29 degrees out Celsius, which means out there. It's probably 36, 34. So yeah, I don't feel like cooking using, uh, using fire. Before we get into that, I want to get into some background. I never got serious about cooking till about 2002, 2003. Like a lot of people, I grew up in the 70s and 80s as a kid where the traditional family model was mom cooked every night, dad would be the barbecue guy on the weekend. And uh, you know, my grandmother never taught me to cook, my dad never taught me to cook, my mom never taught me to cook, I never really learned how to cook. Joined the army in 1988 when I was 17 years old. Mostly at that time I was living in barracks and I was eating in military kitchens. So I never had to cook for myself. When I eventually moved out of the barracks and lived on my own, rented apartment, rented house, didn't have a lot of money like most people. And let's just say that my cooking skills were fucking deplorable at best. And I ate shit like a lot of people in their 20s do. You're young, you don't have a lot of money, you know, so you're not eating the best. Gourmet to me was uh, some, some Cajun seasoning on some chicken thighs and done on this little shitty hibachi barbecue with some uh, itchy man fucking noodles, packaged noodles. So fast forward to uh, 2002, 2003, I deployed to Bosnia on a peace support operation and was there for seven months. The job I was in at that time was uh, very much mobile. So they gave me an allowance to eat off the economy. What that means is I'm eating in local restaurants in Bosnia. Now, Bosnia has just come out of a war. They don't have fucking McDonald's, KFC, Taco Bell, and all that shit. No Pizza Hut, nothing. There's no chain restaurants there. So when you go to a restaurant there, you are literally eating farm to table. The pork, beef, chicken you can see those animals running around now that's on your plate all the vegetables that you're eating is growing in a garden out the back right so that's as organic as it gets now after eating like that for seven months i came back to canada i had a hard time with shitty processed food that we eat back here in north america couldn't do fast food made me sick to my stomach and i realized fuck i gotta learn to cook so how do you learn to do that well you've got the internet at the time in the 90s, we didn't have the internet, so you had to watch a food show. The first food show I ever watched was a show called Yan Can Cook by Chef Martin Yan. This is 1982, I'm 11 years old. Why am I watching a cooking show at 11? Fuck, I don't know. I used to watch Hercules and Scooby-Doo and the same shit everybody else watched growing up. But Chef Yan was amazing. He was uh, very entertaining. He was probably one of the first entertaining chefs that had his own cooking show and he would teach people how to cook traditional Chinese dishes like stir fries and other traditional Chinese dishes. And it was, it was a cool show. He had a tagline at the end of each show that went, Yan can cook and so can you. So fuck, that's the first one I watched. I got into the Food Network in the, in the uh, mid 90s. That was the Food Network as you know it today is not the same as it was back then. It was a little more raw, more oriented towards cooking. Whereas today it's about fucking kids baking cakes and shit and all these absolute bullshit uh, mystery ingredient boxes where some soccer mom shows up in a Dodge Caravan and opens up a basket and inside of it is fucking yak testicles, tree bark, 
and a, uh, a pile of lava rocks. You know, and then the guy comes down and goes, well, Karen, what are you going to make today? And she goes, well, I think I'm going to saute the yak testicles in some sage and tarragon butter and white wine. And I'll do a, uh, a shaved tree bark salad. And I'm going to throw it on top of the lava rocks. Like, do not fucking believe that these people do not know what's in those boxes. Sorry, I went off on a rant. That is not helping or teaching you how to cook. And I'm not shitting on the Food Network. The executives that run that uh, network know what they're doing. They know what people want. People like these bullshit competition cooking shows. Gordon Ramsay fucking yelling at people. Little kids making cakes that look like uh, Pokemon or whatever. That's all good shit, but that is not what teaches you how to cook. I began my journey learning how to cook. I started off with cooking shows. I started off following recipes and really evolved this over the last 20 years to get to where I am today. Today, if you want to see what I cook, I'm that guy on Instagram that's, that posts like two things, pictures of my dogs and the food I cook. It's obviously been good enough to get me to where people have invited me to do their weddings. I've cooked for up to 120 people on multiple occasions at weddings and shit like that. The Fire for Fab podcast was never intended to be just a bunch of military guys talking military shit. That was just how it kind of started. I'm, I'm slowly evolving it because my ultimate goal is to be able to make documentary film. That's what I want to do. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I've done three recorded episodes with military guys that are now members of, of uh, my, my panel, if you will, the Olive Drab Hooligans. We are on uh, Fire for Effect Live, which is my live show, typically every Wednesday night. But I want to evolve it, I want to do more. And this is the next step of that. So Fire for Effect, The Flying Kitchen will be a cooking series showing how to cook real world food for real people, which is not what you see on TV. The closest thing to that is the latest cooking show I watch called Sam the Cooking Guy on YouTube. It's a show by a guy named Sam Zion. He's a Canadian currently residing in San Diego. It's a fucking awesome show. Only on YouTube, he swears, he fucks up, his kid's behind the camera and helps him out. And it's amazing, you should check him out on YouTube. That's, that's kind of how I'm modeling what I'm doing. I don't know what direction it's gonna go yet. It'll, it'll depend on the feedback from, from you guys. Like, you can DM me, at the Army Chris on uh, Instagram or Twitter, or you can leave comments below in this video. Tell me what you think, tell me what you, what you want to see. I got a few ideas coming out. The Veterans Association Food Bank delivers hampers of food to, uh, to needy veterans in the Edmonton and Calgary area in Alberta. And one of the challenges that got thrown at me or ideas was, Chris, why don't you take one of these hampers and do a cooking show with the contents in that hamper and show some of these veterans in need how to cook because maybe they don't have those skills. You know, a lot of those guys lived in the base their whole life, maybe they had a wife or a husband or whatever that walked them through how to cook food. So I think that might be an idea. We'll see how it goes. But what I want to do is talk about cost-effective cooking, how you cook for one person, you know, how you buy your food, how you prep your food, and then how you cook it that's practical and, and real world. So we'll see how it goes. Cooking for me is more than just cooking. There's two reasons I got into it. I stated earlier that I need to be able to learn how to cook good food because I was eating shitty fucking food. And when I went to Bosnia, I learned what real food was like. The second reason is mental health. It, it's my de-stressor, if you will. Some people do yoga. Some people trim fucking bonsai trees. I cook. That's my way to relax. It centers my brain on the task at hand. I focus on that and then I end up creating something that people enjoy. So that's, that's kind of one of the drivers behind why I'm doing this. Today, to keep it simple, I'm gonna teach you how to cook the easiest fucking thing in the world. The, it's actually easier than grilled cheese. So next to making toast, there is nothing easier than what we're gonna make today. It involves no stove, no barbecue, no heat, and it's called ceviche. So let's get into it. So we're gonna make ceviche. What is ceviche? Ceviche is a seafood dish made from raw seafood cured in citrus juice, okay, like lemon or lime juice. Originating in what we now call Peru. It comes from the word ceviche, 
which means tender or fresh fish. Common across Central and South America and in Mexico, we're gonna make a Mexican variant of that today. You can also find it in uh, the Caribbean and the Southern United States. I've had it before, it's not savapshi. So savapshi is a myth meat that is grilled common in Southeastern Europe. It's also the national dish of Bosnia, but that's another subject for another day. So ceviche, not savapchi, again, I've had it a few times. The last time I had it was in Sayulita, Mexico. Sayulita is a small little hippie surfer town about 40 kilometers north of uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico on the uh, Pacific side. And I ate it pretty much every day. Check this out. There you go, a lovely fucking dish. We're gonna make the Mexican variant thereof. There are a lot of different variations depending on which region you go to. I'm a fan of the Mexican variant that you see here. And that's what we're gonna make today. Before we get into cooking ceviche, I know you're chomping at the bit, I wanna talk about things you need to do in advance prior to cooking. We're talking about preparation, we're talking about organization, and in French culinary terms, this is called mise en place. Mise en place directly translated in English means having your fucking shit sorted out. Okay, it actually doesn't mean that. So mise en place directly translated means putting in place or to gather and organize your shit. It is probably the most important thing next to the actual cooking itself and takes up likely 90% of the time. Have your shit organized. Okay, simple little things. Have your garbage can empty. Over here I have a, a, a sink full of soapy hot water to wash my stuff as I go. I like to clean as I go. You should too, especially if you're entertaining guests. So my mise en place for this is having my ingredients ready, having my bowl ready, having my cutlery ready, and everything I need to make this dish, okay? Depending on the complexity of what you're making, mise en place is very important, but it really comes down to being organized, doing as much prep as you can, measurements of certain ingredients. If it calls for half a cup of this, have that half cup ready. If it calls for X amount of chopped vegetables, have those chopped vegetables ready. The more shit you can do in advance, will streamline your workflow, make your cooking a lot easier. I'll get into it in more detail and follow on episodes. I just wanna mention what that means and how important it actually is. For this particular dish, it's quite simple. Here we've got a bowl, <coughs> a chef's knife, a spoon, I've got portion sizes for what I'm making today because I'm cooking for one. So I've got eh, a little under half a cucumber, about a third of a red onion, one whole tomato, might be a bit much. I'm definitely not using a whole jalapeno in this, but I haven't cut into it yet. I have an avocado, which will be last. I have my lime juice and my salt and pepper to taste. So. That's about as organized as I need to be. Over here, I've got some paper towel, right? Because I like to keep clean as I go. So that's what's important. That's mise en place. Fuck, let's get into it. Okay, so we've covered the importance of mise en place. I cannot stress that enough. Now we're gonna get into it. What you see in front of me right now is just the protein. So for this dish, because we're doing a, uh, as I mentioned before, a Mexican version of ceviche. I like to use shrimp. Um, I'm only making this dish for one person right now, me, mainly because, well, I only had four uh, lovely black tiger prawn shrimps and uh, nobody else is fucking here. So, how does this all work? Here we have lime juice, okay? Here's some lime juice and I have some shrimp. The process is known as denaturation. What that means is, in layman's terms, it means I'm gonna use citric acid to cook this shrimp. What it actually means is it is the process of altering the protein state of something by applying a stress to it, in this case, citric acid. So there's your Alton Brown moment. So what you do, you can keep them whole like that or you can already pre-cut them up. I like to keep them whole. I'm gonna cover these bad boys with lemon juice. Make sure they're fully covered. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm making a mess here, apologize. Get in there, get happy. That 
That should be good. Okay, these are gonna go into the fridge for about an hour, roughly. That's an arbitrary time, okay? You need to watch and pay attention to what's happening with them. It's about an hour for shrimp this size. And um, what I'm looking for is when they turn pink. Very similar to if you pan fry them or grill them, you're looking for that cooked look where it goes from that black color, if you're using tiger shrimp, to, to, to pink. And they'll begin to curl in and you'll be able to tell quickly if they're cooked. And it's about an hour, you can go longer, but the longer you go, the rubbery it gets. If you are adverse to this, don't be alarmed. You can use pre-cooked shrimp. Don't be afraid to do that. That skips this entire fucking step and it buys you an hour of cooking time that you don't need to you know, worry about, right? You buy pre-cooked shrimp, you pre-mix it the way we're gonna during the next step and you will still impress your neighbors and wow the, uh, the guy or girl next door with your beautiful dish. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. We're gonna come back in about an hour and we'll begin the preparation of the rest of the uh, rest of the ingredients, okay? So, be right back. We're about, we're a little over an hour. And as you can see, I'm gonna move this shit out of the way here. That shrimp, I can't tilt it, okay? Cause I got lemon juice, sorry, lime juice in there. Is cooked. But if you look at that, it's now turned that pink I was talking about. It still has a little bit of time to go, but that's okay. Cause I wanna prep the rest of my ingredients. So I'm gonna flip that, let it continue getting happy, and we'll get into prepping the rest of your vegetables. Now, here's another tip for you guys. Don't cut up your vegetables till right before you have to. I'm gonna talk about timing and time planning your meal so that when you say you're gonna eat at seven, it doesn't turn into fucking nine o'clock at night. If your aunt Jenny used to prep the salad six hours in advance and you wonder why it was all fucking soggy, the Caesar salad with the croutons and, and that fake bacon that turns into mush, that's because that shit was prepped way too far in advance. Vegetables like this, like this, like this, you don't wanna cut into them too early. Just their, their, their natural state is full of water and happiness and juice. If you cut into them, put them in a fucking bowl, put them in the fridge, I let them sit there, they just get soggy and soggy and soggy, okay? So I usually wait maybe 15 minutes before, depending on what I got going on, before I start hacking into vegetables. So let's get into this. We're gonna get this bowl the fuck out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, first thing, cucumber. I got just under half of an English cucumber. Um, if you can get your ingredients at a farmer's market, I strongly encourage that. I believe in supporting local. I buy my shit from the farmer's market as often as possible. I understand that can be a bit pricey depending on which farmer's market you go to. And in the interest of cost effectiveness, if your local superstore, Walmart, or wherever you get your groceries is, is, is better, do that. Okay, so this is an English cucumber. I'm gonna cut the end off. I can eat that a bit. Give her a quick rinse. I know I should have did it first. Now, skin on, skin off, personal preference, whatever you're into. First thing we're gonna do, slice that in half, all right? See all those seeds in there? There's a lot of moisture and shit you don't want in your, uh, in the dish, okay? So I take that and I'm just gonna scrape a lot of that seed out like this. You're not gonna get it at all. Just get, get a lot of that fucking unwanted moisture out. Put that over there. Okay. You can buy these little baby seedless cucumbers. Those are nice too, but they're expensive. Get rid of that pulp. Chunk of paper towel. Clean that fucking shit up. And we're gonna dice. In this case, I like big chunks, okay? I don't like fine, finely diced stuff. So I'm gonna go with big hunks here. I'm a skin on guy, it's just how I roll. That's a personal preference. You can uh, obviously pull out your vegetable grater and do it that way if you want. Okay. 
say happy happy and that is bang on put that in my bowl tomato same thing get all that shitty ass watery pulp out of your tomato easiest way to do that cut it in half cut it again into quarters I'm actually going to cut it into thirds sorry eights army math fucking bear with me and then what I'm going to do is just get all that crap out of there that I don't like So that stuff right there, you can just peel that out with your hands. Put your thumb in, gone. Thumb in, not as much as you can anyway. Thumb in, gone. Same thing, I like big hunks. It's whatever you're into, whatever your preference is. Just dice that up. that in onion this I will actually dice a little finer so once you've got that rough chop red onion slam that in that's in there here's the last one this is a jalapeno pepper you can use a serrano or poblano whatever you want or if you don't like heat fucking leave it out if you use this please take the seeds out the seeds and all the pulp and shit are what makes it the hottest all right so and i i strongly encourage you if, if you're fucking weak or you don't like heat wear uh surgical gloves like rubber gloves or use a shopping bag or something when you cut this open. Doesn't bother me, but it bothers uh, it bothers some people. So I'm gonna cut the end off of this fucker. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. <laughs> Save that for later. I'm gonna take the same spoon and get all the seeds and shit out of this thing. Okay, that's where your the bulkier heat is. All these seeds and stuff. And that's about as much as I can handle. Now, we're gonna take all that goodness, put that away later. Some pepper. Some salt. Not too much, okay? This is gonna be a to taste thing, your lime juice. Give it a little spritz. It's good enough. Take my spoon, give it a mix. Onion, tomato, cucumber, jalapeno. Basic ingredients, some salt, pepper, some lime. I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna put that in the fridge. And we're gonna wait for our shrimp to sort itself out. 
All right, plating, the moment has come. As you can see down here, our, our shrimp is fucking thoroughly cooked. Like I said before, it went from black. It's been sitting in this lime juice for actually a lot longer than I said. I said about an hour, fucking wrong, because there were big hunks. After about an hour, I looked at it, it wasn't done yet, so I cut it up into pieces, put it back in, let it go for another hour or so. If you're using big shrimp, two to three hours, I'm not trying to scare you off. If you're fucking scared, use pre-cooked shrimp. If not, give it some time to let it get happy. Cut it up, look at it. If is it ready, then we'll throw it in. If you're playing a dinner party and you're time sensitive, definitely use pre-cooked. But if you have the time, you know, with, with big chunks like that, cut it up, look at it, you'll know it's ready. So, plating, we're pretty much down to everything's ready to go. We got two, two last ingredients that I always save for last. So our vegetables here are ready to rock. I'm gonna give them a little shake. Peel that off. I'm gonna take the shrimp, strain it off into my soapy water, shake that up, dump that in. Now here's where your hands come into play. I'm gonna mix this up. Now because these vegetables have been sitting a little while, there's a lot of a lot of water and moisture at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is get another bowl, take that, take my strainer, you can hear it, you can hear all that water. I said earlier don't make a salad in advance, this is exactly why. Because you get all this fucking moisture that sits in the bottom of that salad. So don't listen to Aunt Jenny, she's full of shit. Okay. Give that a little shake. Right, see that? I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope this fucking thing's in focus again. We'll let that sit there. I also have some lovely cilantro that I've already pre-chopped. The last chunk before we actually plate this fucking thing is the avocado, okay? When you buy avocados, COVID fucked this all up. Squeeze it, feel it. If it feels mushy, it's overripe. If it feels way too firm, like there's no give to it, it's uh, under-ripened. That sounds right, right? Okay, now, Take your knife, slice till you hit the pit, go around the avocado, not cut your fucking hands open. Once you do that, open it up. Okay, how do you get the pit out? Well, I'll tell you the best way is not this way, X, don't do that, don't get a spoon, you'll fuck up all that lovely flesh. Take the knife, go like this. Twist, comes out. You take a spoon, we'll talk about how to store an avocado later. And you're going to work your way around this thing. There's these neat gadgets for slicing these fucking things. I don't use those. Pop it out, bam, done. Now, Put that away. All I'm gonna do, you can slice all the way through, which is what I'm gonna do this time. Get a couple chunks that fuck up like that, don't worry about it. I fucking love avocado, I really do. I have a set of these ring things, they're for baking, but I use them for uh, rice, quinoa, 
fucking bulgur, whatever, right? Um, risotto, great, and it works well for this. So I take my spoon, this thing's drained out sufficiently. I'm gonna load this ring up, Let's see, make sure we can see. Nice couple hunks of shrimp in there. Don't be shy, load it up. You wanna pack this thing down. a bit here okay we take some cilantro put it around the plate you can also take the cilantro in advance which I should have did but I'm a little tired right now smash it in there and then mix it all up now I'm going to lift this. And I get that more or less nice stack. I take my lovely avocado slices and just layer them around. Come on, don't fuck with me right now. course it's stuck to the thing either piece of it's fucked up don't worry about it what you end up with is that okay Lovely, beautiful, delicious, light, summery, fucking, it can be a, a snack, it can be a lunch, it can be a full meal, depending on how much you want. And uh, yeah, that's what you get. There you go, ceviche, my way. A lot of variations, you can add different vegetables to it. You can add some chopped bell pepper, red, yellow, orange, whatever you want. You could add those, uh, what the fuck are they called? Edamame, edamum, whatever, beans. Make it your own, enjoy it. It's um, the perfect kind of meal you can eat for hot weather. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will make more. Leave me some comments on what you thought or DM me with some ideas and I'll get around to them. So until next time, if Yen can cook and I can cook, you can cook. All right, fuck, now that's done. I'm gonna uh, get drunk. I thought this fucking video was gonna take me like four hours. I've been doing this for two fucking days. I, I wanted to go outside and like film it in the nice sun and all that shit. It's fucking 11 o'clock and it's pitch black out and the clouds are coming in. And I'm absolutely, cannot believe how long this took. That being said, everything you don't see, these lights, that camera, that camera, Fucking editing over there, writing the script, cooking the food, all the retakes, all the fuck ups. Sorry for the bad, uh, you know, focus and shit. I'm, I'm doing all of that myself. Um, yeah, so fucking right on. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys downrange.